If you think corn built the Americas, think again. Long before golden fields of maize stretched across the continent, another plant ruled the land, one so powerful, so adaptable, and so nutritious that entire civilizations thrived on it. It fed millions through droughts, fueled empires, and survived conditions that would turn corn to dust. Yet today, barely anyone grows it. Its name is amaranth, the forgotten supercrop that could hold the key to feeding our future. Over 4,000 years ago, long before European ships crossed the Atlantic, the Aztec, Inca, Maya, and Pueblo peoples were already cultivating amaranth. It wasn't just food, it was culture, medicine, and spirituality all rolled into one. Spanish colonial records show that before the conquest, nearly four out of every five acres of Aztec farmland were devoted to amaranth. That's how vital it was. Amaranth thrived where other crops failed. It didn't care about rocky soils, poor rainfall, or relentless heat. Its deep taproot stretching as far as six feet underground pulled life-giving moisture from where no other crop could reach. While corn wilted and wheat withered, amaranth kept standing tall, offering both tender leaves and nutrient-rich grains, two harvests from a single plant. This was nature's insurance policy against famine. A single acre of amaranth could sustain families through drought and hunger, turning even harsh landscapes into dependable food sources. Let's talk numbers, because this is where amaranth truly outshines the rest. The seeds contain about 14 to 16 percent protein, nearly double that of corn. But what makes it revolutionary is lysine, an essential amino acid missing in most other grains. Without lysine, your body can't properly build or repair muscle tissue, meaning amaranth delivers complete protein, the kind you usually get from meat or eggs. Its leaves are equally impressive. Fresh amaranth greens pack twice the calcium of spinach, more iron than kale, and generous amounts of vitamins A and C. One cup of cooked amaranth grain provides 251 calories, 9 grams of protein, and 5 grams of fiber, more than double the nutritional density of white rice. And unlike most grains that only give you seeds, amaranth offers edible greens all summer long, followed by protein-rich seeds in the fall. It's a crop that literally keeps on giving, nourishing families from spring to harvest. For all its brilliance, amaranth's downfall had nothing to do with its performance. It was political. When Spanish conquistadors arrived in the early 1500s, they found a civilization sustained by a sacred grain they didn't understand. The Aztecs used amaranth in religious rituals, shaping dough made from its flour and honey into figures of their gods, which they then broke and ate in ceremonies. To the colonizers, this resembled their own communion but was deemed heretical. They saw it not as food but as a symbol of rebellion. Their solution was brutal. Amaranth was banned, entire harvests were burned, and farmers who grew it faced execution. Within generations, the fields that once glowed crimson with amaranth vanished, replaced by European grains like corn and wheat, but amaranth refused to die. Hidden behind cornfields, indigenous families in Mexico and the American Southwest quietly saved its seeds. They grew it in secret, passed it down in clay jars, and whispered its legacy from one generation to the next. For nearly four centuries, amaranth survived underground a silent act of resistance that preserved one of humanity's most remarkable plants. Here's the exciting part. You can grow this ancient survivor right in your backyard. Amaranth is honestly one of the most forgiving crops out there, perfect for gardeners dealing with dry soil or unpredictable weather. It germinates easily and, get this, requires about half as much water as corn. An acre can yield up to 3,000 pounds of grain, even under tough conditions. To get started, plant amaranth seeds about a quarter inch deep in well-drained soil after the last frost. It thrives in warm weather, ideally between 68 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. Keep the soil lightly moist, until seedlings establish, giving it about one inch of water per week. Once mature, amaranth becomes highly drought-tolerant, and rarely needs additional watering, unless the season turns extreme. For a nutrient boost, mix 1 liter of water with 20 grams of organic seaweed extract and 5 grams of liquid kelp fertilizer, stir well and apply this solution every 2 weeks during the growing season. This gentle feed encourages lush leaves and abundant seed heads.
By midsummer, you can expect amaranth to tower somewhere between four to six feet high crowned with these brilliant clusters of crimson, gold or even purple seeds. When the seed heads start to dry just cut them, thresh gently to separate the seeds, and winnow away the chaff. Store the dried seeds in a cool, dry place. They'll last for years. And don't forget, the young leaves can be harvested for salads or cooked up like spinach, making amaranth both a grain and a green that's really worth growing year after year. So, why has an amaranth reclaimed its throne? The simple answer, economics. Modern agriculture is really built for uniform, machine-harvested crops like corn and wheat. Their infrastructure, subsidies and processing systems just leave little room for unconventional grains. Amaranth's tiny seeds require special handling and honestly, can't yet be harvested efficiently by standard combines. During the 20th century, small-scale farmers did try to revive it, but without the massive backing that corn enjoys, amaranth just couldn't compete. Today, the entire global amaranth market is worth less than $10 million, compared to corn's staggering $200 billion industry. But the tide is turning. As climate change pushes global temperatures higher and rainfall patterns grow erratic, scientists and sustainable farmers are rediscovering amaranth's potential. It can tolerate heat over 95 degrees Fahrenheit, thrive in dry soil, and still produce steady yields, making it one of the most promising climate-smart crops for the future. Amaranth isn't just a relic of the past. It's a glimpse into what sustainable farming could look like. It's gluten-free, rich in antioxidants, and even contains squalene, a rare compound known for enhancing cell strength and oxygen efficiency in the body. Its health benefits extend far beyond the dinner table, supporting heart health and reducing inflammation. You know, in fact, NASA once tested amaranth as a potential food source for space missions, which is honestly proof of just how efficient and resilient this crop really is. And in kind of a poetic twist, its legacy still lives on in the traditional Mexican treat called alegria, made from popped amaranth and honey, the very same energy food that was once carried by Aztec warriors into battle. Growing amaranth isn't just about producing food, it's actually about reconnecting with a piece of agricultural wisdom that, well, modern farming seems to have forgotten. It's about resilience, the kind that survives colonization, drought, and honestly, centuries of neglect. So, whether you're a backyard gardener, a homesteader, or a small farmer, amaranth offers a lesson in working with nature, not against it. So, the next time you walk past a field of corn, just remember that there's another plant, tougher, healthier, and really, infinitely more adaptable, waiting to take its rightful place under the sun. Amaranth's story isn't just history, it's actually a roadmap to a sustainable future. If you found this guide from Crop Corner inspiring, don't forget to subscribe, share, and you know, drop a comment below. Let's bring forgotten crops like amaranth back to life, because honestly, the next agricultural revolution might just start in your own backyard.